Yo, y'all already know it's cool. Come on, cool to K, and we bet with another video. Look, I knew this day would come. I knew this day would come, and I, I, I've been dreading it. I didn't, I didn't want to admit that we have to be here soon. Today, today we got a, we got a reaction. Today I'm reacting to investigating Mr. Beast. They got him. They got Mr. Beast, guys. I haven't watched the video yet. I don't know what he did, but and again, there's not gonna be no hate to Coffeezilla. Coffeezilla. He's been he's killing the game. He's coming, he's giving out the truth to people. He's trying to actually help some people out. So you know what? It's love to love to coffee, but expect it better from Mr. Beast, you know what I mean? But we're gonna watch the video, see what he actually did. Maybe maybe we can we can let it slide. Alright, yep, let's get into this. I investigated Mr. Beast, who was recently accused of making twenty-three million dollars with insider trading and scams. I oh, wanted wow. to know the full story. Wow. Wow, Mr. Beast is scamming niggas? I don't know Mr. Beast was scamming. I thought he just I seen the stuff with, with Chris. I thought it was gonna be more on the ass though. Scam Mr. Beast is scammer? Story, so I reached out to everyone, from researchers to crypto projects, even to Mr. Beast himself. And let me say, the story is more complicated than you think. I okay. wanna be clear. What Mr. Beast did, what his team did, is shady. But what we care about is did he cross that bright red line from shady to a legal scam. And mm -hmm. contrary to what Twitter mm -hmm. says, I don't think that's an easy answer. Instead, I think the answer Dang. will depend on you. If you love Mr. Beast, I do. there will be an explanation late, at every turn and a scapegoat. But if All you right. hate Mr. Beast, what I'm about to show you will seem unethical and like a clear abuse of fame for money. So already this story is difficult, but I wanna make you aware okay. of two more things which matter. First, I have gone to Mr. Beast's team to try to fact check this story extensively, and they declined to fact check or comment on my many questions. Instead, that's what he does. they gave me a statement, which we will get to. But that's also what Beast does. Mr. Beast, like, he doesn't like to talk about controversy. He just kind of lets it go because he knows he's going to get millions of views on the next video. He's like, cool. Y'all don't fuck with me. I'm going to get views anyway, <laughs> which is crazy, which is crazy when you think about it. But at the end of the day, that's that's what you guys expect when you talk to Mr. Beast. Be like, hey, is this shit true? Eh. Believe what you want. <laughs> Shit. Secondly, I have a bit of history with Mr. Beast. I interviewed and spoke positively uh -oh. about him in the past, but also his new co-founder is suing me and his other co-founder threatened to sue me. So you can make of that what yes, you will. To sue him too. As always, I just want to let you know where I'm coming yeah. from. And I've tried to get all sides of the story. We're going to start with the major allegations against Mr. Beast and okay. build on those. They come from two sources. Firstly, an investigation by Soma XBT, which claims Mr. Beast made $10 million by backing low cap crypto tokens, which are down 90%. And the second investigation comes from a group of five people who investigated Mr. Beast and found $23 million in profits from quote, scams, shady deals, and his network. Now, there are a lot of crypto projects they go over. And I wanna be clear, some of these allegations I agree are bad. Others I think are actually worse than have been reported and still other allegations I simply disagree with them on. So we're gonna start with what I don't agree with. According to the report, Polychain Monsters or PMON is a project which KSI promoted heavily. Mr. Beast did not, but Mr. Beast did get in the presale and make a lot of money. And thus the conclusion is made, it's highly likely Mr. Beast made an investment from that Ooh. insider information of KSI's promotional deal. Okay. But there's- I'm not a crypto nigga. I'm not a crypto nigga. Y'all yeah, was not catching me on the crypto. I did stock like day trading for a little bit, but I was never a crypto nigga. And what this is sounding like, a hey boy, promoted crypto you said oh my boy's promoting this let me buy it and then he sold i don't know that's what it sounded like to me so far but i could be wrong i could be wrong simply no evidence provided of this i have the same thoughts about Jigstack, another coin which ksi promoted and the conclusion is though mr beast did not officially follow Jigstack. In his network, KSI was involved in promoting Jigstack. From this information, Mr. Beast invested and made a large return. Here again, there isn't concrete proof. Now I asked the team who wrote this piece and the lead author, Casper Vandeluk, told me, quote, having known Mr. Beast's having a very strong connection with KSI, it's basically highly probable he was vested as a result of KSI. No concrete evidence, just going off probabilities. Okay. But I'm going to say I don't, know if that's I don't agree with that, I don't that's and I'm going to toss those probabilities aside. I think they reached too far. Instead, I'm going to stick with what we can prove happened. Luckily, the biggest claims in this report, the biggest money makers, are much better supported by evidence. 
Starting with Super. This is the project Mr. Beast is alleged to have made the most amount of money on, over $10 million based on a pre-sale of $100,000. As for evidence, we have leaked screenshots showing Mr. Beast telling Super's founder that he can do 100K. Then we have a wallet that both investigations trace to Mr. Beast, sending 100K to the pre-sale wallet. And then we have the same wallets getting millions of these Super tokens in a period of unlocks, which were almost all sold aggressively. Now, why is this bad? Well, Mr. Beast is obviously hugely influential, and he publicly associated himself with the project twice. Once on March 3rd, 2021, he responded to a tweet with eyeball emojis, and then he interacted a second time on May 12th, 2021. This is much worse. The founder, Elio Trades, had tweeted, there's a gym sitting there on the market at eye-watering prices set to explode during the DeFi summer 2.0. Mr. Beast's response, super? But what he doesn't say is that he'd already purchased a huge stake in Super at this point. Ooh. And on the day that he's tweeting, he was selling tokens, allegedly. Not Oh, that's techie. That's techie. That's techie. That's techie. Because he knows the day that he put that he tweets it, there are people are going to be like, oh, Super. Mr. Beast in Super. Let me get in Super. So he knows the big people are coming in. It's time for him to come out. Oh, techie. Local techie. Not only Local that, techie, he mister. had been selling Local tokens and beast. continued to sell tokens. In the 72 hours after the May 12th tweet, Mr. Beast sold about $200,000 worth of these tokens. And remember the context. He's responding to the founder of the coin discussing a gym at eye watering prices that's going to explode during the summer. And Mr. Beast's response is the coin he's selling. Mm. So publicly, it's signaling, hey, Super is this undervalued coin, and privately, Mr. Beast allegedly sold. Now, mm. I ran these wallets by Mr. Beast, as well as the accusation, but I didn't get a reply. Instead, I got a heavily lawyered statement from a spokesman, who I'm going to warn you, is about to complicate things. Quote, okay. these investments were made and managed in consultation with industry experts to ensure full compliance with all appropriate rules and regulations. Ooh. The wallet is not owned or managed by Jimmy, but rather a fund led by respected and sophisticated managers. The fund closely evaluated and scrutinized hundreds and hundreds of opportunities, which resulted in several investments. Some have been more successful, others less, and others still works in progress. The fund's investment strategies apply the same rigorous standards as many other experienced investors in the field. Now, I have a lot of questions. But the big thing is Jimmy denies doing any of the trading or managing the trading and blames it on a fund. The problem, the problem that I'm seeing here is not, again, it may not be a Mr. Beast thing. It may just be his team. From what it's sounding like, from what that says is, yeah, Mr. Beast, po like, Mr. Beast posted Super because his team told him, we're in Super, we're in, we're in Super, whatever's happening with Super. And then he posts, oh, Super. Now, let's say Mr. Beast could have thought, oh, this is just a, a, a nice thing I'm saying. I'm just online. I'm just talking about what I'm in. And then his team saw it and they're like, oh, we're, we can make money because if Beast posts, we're going to make bread from it. So right when he posted, they started selling. So I think it could be some sketchy stuff from his team. Maybe that's not even on him, but uh, local techie. So I asked some obvious follow-up questions. What is the name of this fund? Who are the industry experts? And what rules and regulations were followed that allowed you to tweet about a coin while your fund is selling? I didn't get a response. It's worth mentioning the spokesman is Matthew Hiltzik, a well-known crisis management consultant. Thankfully, Online, there still are a number of clues we can follow to try to find the right person for this fund. The reason most people link Mr. Beast to this wallet we've been tracking is mostly based on a tweet by Mr. Beast saying he bought a specific crypto punk, which belonged to an account which goes by Wu-Tang Clan. People assumed, understandably, that this was Mr. Beast's wallet. But what is lesser known is that another account has also tweeted about CryptoPunks and has the same ties back to Wu-Tang Clan. A guy named Jason Williams. He's followed by Mr. Beast on Twitter. And he's the author of a book on Bitcoin, so he's a crypto guy. And I found Jason tweeting about another CryptoPunk saying, I hope you enjoy your new home sold for 100 ETH. That sale he's talking about links back to the same address Mr. Beast does, Wu-Tang Clan. On YouTube, there's even more clues. Jason can be seen surfing, wearing a Wu-Tang Clan shirt, and his brand name, Going Parabolic, happens to be owned by the same Mr. Beast wallet, GoingParabolic.eth. Mm. So there's very good evidence that Jason Williams was also involved in this same wallet, which means that it might be true that Mr. Beast wasn't the guy buying or selling 
which would be good for Mr. Beast and bad for these investigations. But just when I thought Mr. Beast might have no say in what this wallet did, I saw this podcast with Logan Paul, where Jimmy discusses crypto punks once again and things get complicated. I also, so me and Logan both fought punks. You guys have probably seen on his Twitter that uh, he fought a bunch of crypto punks at the same time, right? Yep. Gary pulled us yep. in that call. Yep. So have you ever told that story? No. Uh, Gary V, it's like <laughs> f 11 p.m. Just out of nowhere, just calls me. And he's like, yo, I, I got like 30 people to call hop in. I'm like, oh, I don't give a, I don't care. He's like, it'll be the best decision of your life. Just get in. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, okay. Yeah. And so I just joined the call. And I just see like Logan and I, I don't even know these other people. Yo. I'm gonna put them on blast. Every heavy hitter you can imagine exactly. who's worth a billion dollars was on this one call, and Gary V is in the little corner, the little square. Yeah. He's, look, he's going, Crypto punks, it's gonna be huge. It's gonna be the next Facebook. We're all of us were like, Gary. I'm texting Logan. We're all of us are like, Yo, Gary's nuts. Yo, Gary was right again. I bought a I'm not, Wait, Is this bad? Again, I'm not a crypto guy. I'm not a crypto guy. I don't, I don't really know what's going on with this crypto stuff, but this is bad. I he, I understand why people might not fuck with it because it's like, oh yeah, we got a bunch of billionaires to come and be like, yeah, we're buying this up and then boom, sell. Like, I get that, but it's like, you also his friend. Like, you also got to remember, these are friends. At the end of the day, these are these are just boys. These are boys. We're like, get in the call and we're like, yeah, yo, let's do this. Because you do the same thing with your friends. Be like, hey, crypto points is going crazy. Let's make some money. You do that with your friends, right? Wait, wait. Yeah, I bought quite a few. How many? Uh, I, I, I don't want to say, but you I, have to no, say, please. Bro, you I, have, you have to. I bought multiple ones. Yeah. Well, bro, are you double digits, punks? Uh, double, just shy. Well, this clip is very interesting because Jimmy said he made the decision to get crypto punks based on a call with Gary V. But those oh. punks are owned by the wallet we just said was controlled by Jason. So it appears sometimes mm. Mr. Beast is telling Jason what to buy for this fund. So this looks like the mother of all rallies. Many stock markets, US, China, even Singapore are near all time high. Mr. Beast then that later talks sense. about selling sense. these crypto punks and rolling the money into a new project. And once again, it sounds like he's in charge. Well, I've, I've already sold quite a few of them. So Which, I don't know. What? what? <laughs> I, the he's on to the expensive. next thing. I bought a bunch of, so then I am rolled the money into V friends because I Gary, same thing, called me. He's like, V friends. I was like, I don't no, but last time I made money, sure, sure. I'll be honest. These clips, to me, make it difficult to assume Mr. Beast had no idea what's going on. He talks. But it could also be I'm giving I'm giving Beast a lot of credit here, but it could just be like because he speaks with his advisors, right? Like he got on the call with Gary V. He called the he went called his advisor, be like, "Yo, this is what Gary V told me," and I'm pretty sure his advisors are not gonna be like, "Yeah, sh fuck Gary." Gary don't know what he's talking about, so his advisors did it. I don't think that means that Mr. That Mr. Beast is in charge of it, but if he has people trading for him, they're going to listen to the things that he says. So maybe he doesn't know when they pulled out. He, maybe he doesn't know that stuff. He just knows, like, if he says, yeah, let's do this. And then after, when Gary called him, he'd be like, hey, we should be in V, v Friends or V Punks or whatever it is. He called up his advisor, be like, oh, Gary just told me V Friends at the beginning of V Friends. You know what I mean? Doesn't mean he's in charge. Like, it's, he's in charge, but at the end of the day, he's not making all the moves. It could be. It could be. It could be. That's what I'm here for. Crypto punks and V friends like personal investments. And on Twitter, he says that not only he bought crypto punks, he also tweets about loading up on V friends. But again, I have to say, it is also abundantly clear Jason Williams was involved. He says, hey, Gary, thanks for the V friends gift goat. It was a gift from Gary to Mr. Beast. I'm very thankful for it. He didn't have to send anything. So once again, Jason Williams appears to be involved and have something to do with the trading or management of Mr. Beast's crypto wallet. But we know Mr. Beast made some of the decisions. Mm. So of course, I asked Mr. Beast to explain himself if he had any say over the trading. But once again, there's no response. So now I want to turn back to Super. We know from leaked DMs that Mr. Beast and not Jason set up this pre-sale, and we know that Mr. Beast made the tweet. So now we have to guess. Here's what we know. We know Mr. Beast set up the pre-sale according to leaked screenshots. We know mm -hmm. Mr. Beast made the tweet, but we don't know whether it was Jason doing the trading of Super or if he was doing the trading, did Mr. Beast know about it? Did Jason know about the tweet? These are the questions that ultimately matter. And yes, Thanks. I reached out to Jason Williams for a comment. He didn't reply. I did, however, get a hold of Elio Trades, who is the founder of Super, and he insisted that Mr. Beast's tweet was not 
a part of a deal for promotion. Okay. But you should know he also mentions how upset he was with how pre-sale investors sold their tokens, saying most of them sold, including Mr. Beast. Mm. So those are the facts. Mr. Beast gets involved in a pre-sale, for some reason tweets at this project twice, one time on the day his fund is selling tokens, where he seems to imply that they're undervalued. In total, he's alleged to have made $11 million with this deal, according to the report. Damn. Uh, so yeah, that, that's really bad. Now we're going to turn to another allegation, which is about Earn or Eternity Chain. There are some facts which are the same. There are others that are different. For example, instead of Mr. Beast setting up the deal directly, the team at Earn claims they never spoke to Mr. Beast. Quote, okay. we were speaking to his fund manager. And when I asked about these wallets selling allegedly over $4 million in tokens, they say, quote, Mr. Beast's fund was an early investor in our pre-sale. He had the same unlock schedule as everyone else. Were we happy with the way he sold? Definitely not. But legally, there was nothing we could have done. And okay. then just like with Super, they claim they didn't ask for a promotion of the project, but that Mr. Beast decided to comment once himself anyways. On March 9th, 2021, Mr. Beast responds to Eternity Chain saying, this one will be hype. It's worth noting, once again, about 24 hours before saying this, this fund wallet purchased over $100,000 of earned tokens in addition okay. to the presale. Now, what is different about Super? Okay, so what I'm getting from this so far is basically what we, what we know, because right now there's a lot of allegations. What we know for, for sure is Mr. Beast knew about these tokens. He knew about buying them because he's setting up the pre-sales. He's tweet. He is tweeting out. Mr. Beast is the one tweeting out, being like, "Oh, this is gonna be cool. This is gonna be proper. This is gonna be whatever." That's Mr. Beanio. What we don't know is if he was in on selling. We don't know if it's, if he was the one who sold it. And I think that is what makes it into if Mr. Beast is a, is, is a dickhead or not. Because if Mr. Beast wasn't in on the selling, then it should don't matter, right? Like it's the one. Well, it do matter because now we like. His team might be liable and whole thing because they they're looking at his tweets and like oh wait when he tweeted now we're gonna sell and that looks that's fucked up on his team or whatever but that's not a miss that Mr Beast personally didn't do that that's who he has hired but if Mr Beast if they're planning this they're like yo I need you to tweet this and then we're gonna sell and they got that shit worked out now they get the deniability that he didn't do he ain't, hey it wasn't on him he just tweeted out he was he was like I know I, my team told me we we're buying this token. And I just tweeted it out. That's still fucked up on Beast, but there's just no way of knowing that unless we have an insider on Beast team. That's a toughie right there. Is that Mr. Beast's name was put publicly on the Eternity Chain website. On their investors and partners Ooh. page, you might be asking, well, which is it? Is he an investor or a partner? And the answer is both. He got into the presale and the Earn team also claims that he partnered with them for an NFT drop. Uh, supposedly, it was a charity drop and a normal NFT drop. Now, the charity drop specifically did happen in association with one of Mr. Beast's projects, Team C's, saying, quote, all proceeds will go towards cleaning up the seas around mm. the world. This was early November 2021. Then the official Team C's account posts it on November 3rd, 2021, quote, what an awesome crypto collaboration in support of the team. Then the CEO of Eternity Chain, Nick Rose, confirms in Telegram that the drop is supported by Mr. Beast, saying, Earn and ETH tokens will be accepted for the charity auction, which was slated to last two months. Now, the reason I'm sharing all of this is because one month into this two month charity auction on November 30th, 2021, the Rocket Fund or Beast Fund or whatever you want to call it, starts selling huge amounts of this Earn token. Allegedly, oh. they sold over $2 million, while the charity itself was still going on. Urgh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Urgh, okay. So again, dumbing this, dumbing this down. Again, the reason I'm dumbing this down is for me to understand, not for y'all. I'm like, maybe I'll understand it better. So ba basically, Mr. Beanio is doing this charity. They partner up, they make the NFTs, they do all this big, big, big rah, 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 rah. But they also put money into the NFT, right? So they buy it. So that's up in the price, up in the price, up in the price. And then during the charity, because charity, everyone's like, oh my God, let's give to this for charity. Boom, people are putting bread into it. Bread, 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 bread. It's building, building, building. But instead of leaving after charity, because said all the proceeds go to charity, right? But during it, while it's still going up, they're selling. So that bread that they that they're raising is going to dumb. Okay, how do we how do we get around this? Now this one sounds I know terrible. that sounds horrible. It looks horrible. It is horrible. Yeah, it sounds terrible. Although I have to tell you personally, I don't think this was a master plan to pump a coin with a charity 
auction. Okay. If it was the plan, it was a bad one because the NFT auction was ultimately a flop. But do I also think it doesn't matter because regardless of your intention, selling tokens within a month of your two month charity auction is wrong, stupid and unethical? Yeah, that sounds Yes, wrong. yes, I, I think that as well. Because in case you forgot, Mr. Beast is the charity guy Best. whose name is on the website. It isn't a fund. It isn't a crypto rocket fund. It's Mr. Beast's branding. I even asked the Earn team about this saying, quote, why did y'all list Mr. Beast instead of rocket fund in your partner's investors? Was that discussed? They say, quote, we listed him, Mr. Beast, as a partner and quote, yes, they accepted that. So according to the Earn team, Mr. Beast knew or should have known that his name was on the line for this investment and partnership. Mm -hmm. And yet this fund, his fund, whatever you want to call it, sold tokens one month after starting a two month NFT auction for charity. To be fair again though, it's hard to oversell how bad this NFT auction did. I have found only one NFT that appears to have sold here, but the bids were made in the earn token, which the fund was selling. And the actual sale of the NFT didn't happen until after the fund sold in November 30th. The transfer okay. happened in December 23rd. So of course I went to Mr. Beast directly to answer this and see if there was some more context they could provide. There was no response other than the statement we've already read from Mr. Beast that he did not control the trading. Although again, that isn't a really satisfying answer yeah, because really, we've established no. Mr. Beast would sometimes direct what to buy and sell to this fund like CryptoPunks. Personally, like I said, I don't think this was a pre-planned scheme, but regardless of intentions, if you're the charity guy, you support a charity, it flops while your fund makes millions of dollars in profits because it's selling the same earn token people could bid on the charity with. That just is awful. And you should feel awful about it. Um, look, now <laughs> I want to move on from that uh, to talking about our final token, okay. XCAD. This is so, a okay. Before we get into the last one, the first, the first little bit, they said that that's not enough evidence. It was just sub, 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 It was just substantial evidence. That second little bit, local techie. It all depends on how much he knew about the trading and his little bit. We need. There's a little more information we need, but if it, it's like if he knew, fucked up. If he didn't know, it's fucked up on the people he hired and it's a little messed up. But overall, BCU cool. That last one, so far, personally, I don't know why he made the other one before, but worse, but that last one's worse to me. And it may just because I don't understand how the NFT, NFT life works. Maybe I'm just missing something, but that sounds crazy to me. That last one sounded crazy. Tell me if I'm bugging, because I'm because i not the best one to be speaking on this, but that sounded different. A charity? You're doing it for a charity? You have your name up on a charity, and you're still, and you're, and you're selling a month early? I don't know a token you may remember from our investigation into Mr. Beast's business partner, KSI. But unlike KSI, Mr. Beast was not promoting it a lot on Twitter. In fact, the only reason we know Mr. Beast was in the presale is that there were several articles about it bragging about that fact. Once again, Mr. Beast's name was used to promote this instead of the fund itself. And internally to investors, I have to say this built up a lot of excitement, not just because Mr. Beast is a huge name, but because XCAD had what's called creator tokens. So the idea to some investors is that, well, if they're investing, Mr. Beast and KSI, what if they were ever to launch creator tokens? That would be massive. And I bring this up because some people might ask, like, what do these affiliations, how do they impact people buying these projects? And the answer from what I've seen is they actually do impact it quite a lot because people are anticipating like further involvement and also the idea is like they must not be investing unless they're long-term holders. You can see this in the Telegram chat. It became so common that in the XCAD community, one of the admins says, here we go again, another community member asking if there's any possibility of a Mr. Beast KSI token. And meanwhile, by the way, as that's happening, as the investors are hoping for these creator tokens and that they're imminent, behind the scenes, something entirely different had been happening. Like with Super and Earn, Mr. Beast's fund sold a lot of their XCAD early in 2021, rather than holding their tokens. And this was surprising to even the founder of XCAD himself, Oliver Bell, who said they told him they were going to do the opposite. He tells me, quote, hey, so Mr. Beast reached out to me during our pre-sale raise, 
a group was set up with his team and we had a call with his team and they said they liked the concept. There was no strings attached to the investment. They did, however, want a lot bigger ticket than what I offered them, which I'm glad I did not fulfill. We discussed not just flipping this token as this can damage projects if people have decent sized tickets. It was my understanding we were aligned on this. However, after listing to which XCAD performed well, there was heavy dumping from a wallet linked to Mr. Beast's team. I got in contact with them immediately and asked them why they were selling like this. Now, Oliver later claims this discussion about flipping tokens and them being aligned about the fact they're not gonna flip these tokens so quickly was with Jason. Okay. And apparently Oliver was so upset about what happened, he DM'd Jimmy directly, quote, explaining his team will ruin his reputation. And look, sorry to be a broken record, but yes, I reached out to Jimmy about this too. And once again, there was no reply besides the statement we read earlier. Okay. It's worth mentioning that I asked Oliver for proof of this message about ruining relationships. And he said the message had been deleted on Telegram. So who you believe here is up to you. Ooh, Oliver also thing. says, quote, I don't think Jimmy thing. has a bad heart or is a bad person. I think he has genuine interest in the crypto space, but I think the team that handles his crypto is completely clueless. And here on this last yeah. point, I have to disagree with Oliver. I don't think that Jimmy's crypto team is clueless. Yeah, no, I, think I think they, they saw exactly an opportunity to make millions of dollars with Mr. Beast's valuable brand, and they took it, and they did make millions of dollars. And along the way, they did some things that were shady. Whether or not you think they were also illegal is probably going to be shaped by mm. our unanswered questions and where you fill in thanks, those gaps. Thanks, thanks, For example, thanks, thanks, thanks. do you think Mr. Beast knew about the selling that was going on May 12th for the super token? Why did he make that? Like even the last one, the last one, I think the last one is in my opinion, the least bad because it didn't say anywhere that he was, um, he was partnered with them. Right. So they were, they were throwing out his name on, on, on the news, on the newsletters and all the blogs and whatever they, they were throwing it up because they had, which they're allowed to, because he's invested, you're allowed to there, but they were throwing out his name. Um, not necessarily him promoting it. He didn't really post. He's, he even said he didn't even know too much about him being on it, like because he wasn't posting on Twitter. So he wasn't trying to, from what I'm hearing, he wasn't trying to intentionally push it, right? It was just pushed because they decided to push it, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And it's I don't think that's I I, I don't know if you can put that last one on it, but I do think there's some crazy stuff happening. I do think so. Uh, someone needs we we need we need to look at their team. I think they're they're wild. Yeah, they're definitely wilding up. Tweet, and then do you think Mr. Beast knew? about the charity auction and the selling that was happening on November 30th. And do you think Oliver Bell DM'd Mr. Beast and told him his crypto team would ruin his reputation? And if so, was that ignored? I hate to leave so many unanswered questions here, but I warned you, this was a complicated story. And a big part of the problem is the guy at the center of this story cannot or will not give more than a heavily lawyered statement through a spokesman who's a crisis management consultant. And let me just say, it's also frustrating that this statement takes zero accountability. Despite the fact Mr. Beast's team knew every major allegation that we're laying out here today, there is no mention of selling while Mr. Beast was tweeting about Super Token. There's no mention of them selling tokens a month after they partnered with a two month charity auction. And w because lawyers. of that, this statement feels very hollow. W I think lawyers. to Mr. Beast and probably to his fund, Maybe this is just business, you know? They set out to make a lot of money and they made a lot of money. What's the problem, yes. right? This is America. They might think this is the biggest Mr. Beast nothing burger since Mr. Beast Burger. But look, honestly, I'd agree with them if they had done this crypto stuff without using Mr. Beast's name. But right. they want to have their cake and eat it too. This fund trades on Mr. Beast's name. As we've seen, they get in pre-sales based on his name. Uh, he tweets from his public account and they're putting his name publicly on projects, websites, instead of a fund. But when things go south, suddenly, oh, Mr. B's, what? No, I, no liability, just because he's not sitting there physically pressing the buttons. Yeah. I don't think that's the way it works. Look, I wanna close with the final part of this CryptoPunks podcast we showed you earlier, because in many ways, I think it's a microcosm of this story. Obviously, I have to say, I'm not making any comments or judgments about the guy who's suing me, who's also in this clip. That's just Whoa. coincidence. I am Me? only talking about Mr. Beast's reaction because as Mr. Beast is talking about Gary V's great crypto punks call, there's a moment when the co-host says, hey, maybe instead of Gary V being a genius, maybe it's just the call itself that makes the market. 
And Mr. Beast kind of defends it. He says, no, nah, that was in February. You know, CryptoPunks didn't pop until the summer. And, you know, I never talked about CryptoPunks until this very moment. Can I ask you guys a question? When when Gary does that call with all these billionaires and uh, eight months or a year later, everybody's like, Gary was right again. <laughs> yeah. Is it possible that he's right because of the call? Do you know what I'm saying? I, like, I think about that Like, a lot. dude, he has all these billionaire market makers in the thing. I think about he makes lot. the call, makes the market. By the way, you look around at all the punk owners a year later, and you're like, damn, it's all the same mother that were on the call. No, because, bro, there's, there's 10,000 punks, and there's only, like, 30 of us in the call. We can only own and do so much. There's still yeah. an entire yeah, yeah, market yeah. that's going to happen regardless. Right. I can tell you I don't think why, because that was all back, like, early February. But, like, right, right. things didn't pop off till later, and every... Like NFT project was popping off, not just punk. I so. mean, I mean, make no mistake. Like having such influential people involved in projects, it's not. It can't hurt the ability for sure. the project to, right. to well, like, work. But like, you know, ninety-five percent of those people didn't even mention it. You know what I mean? Like, right, right, I've right. never talked about it publicly. Yeah, but that last part isn't quite true. The reason we're all here is Mr. Beast tweeted about CryptoPunks the same day he bought them back in February of 2021. That's how we found his wallet even though we now know someone else was involved too. And I would apply the same level of scrutiny to many of the investments we've talked about. Was it the genius of Jason Williams, Mr. Beast, or this fund that made them tens of millions of dollars? Maybe. Or was it the fact that the name they brought to the table was Mr. Beast, one of the most influential and valuable brands in the world? And that's what got them the great deals. That's what got them a bunch of eyeballs. That's what made it so valuable Probably. to have his name on these websites. And maybe Ooh. that's what made the market. Ultimately, I think it's for you to decide. Okay. All right. Cool. 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 I feel with it. Now, I don't know about too much about the, the legalities. Do I think that their team knew that having that putting his name up on stuff was going to make shit go higher? Yeah. Yeah. Do I think it's crazy? Yeah. Do I think every, every, pretty much every large influencer is doing that? Yeah. Am I, you know, am I too mad at Beast for this? No, nah, I'm not too mad at him. I'm out of this team. I think this team's a little fucked up. But you know what? They're hired to make the nigga money. And if they can if they can give him plausible deniability, I hear it. If he gets some more proof that Beastie knew about it, then I'll be like, Beastie, you kind of have a scumbag for it. But I feel like there's enough right now there's enough deniability. Is there? Yeah, I think there's enough. Damn, I don't know. I'm not too i I'm that's what I'm saying. My thing is, this is not the Logan. The Logan stuff. The Logan stuff, when I seen Coffee's Little do the Logan stuff, I was tight. I was like, damn, Logan, you're a dickhead. All right, because you're in like you knew exactly like you're intentionally fucking with your audience. This just feels like he's like, yo, I've been told this. I give this information to my people and then do with that as you wish. Pretty much. That's what I'm getting from this. Like here, here's what I know is going to happen. This NFT, this crypto, this is what I, I hear is popping. Take that. And then y'all know the business. Y'all do the business. Yeah, y'all know it's cool. Kamar, cool to K. And I'm going to catch y'all next time type shit.